few weeks ago I drew this little fern stand and in this video I thought I would add some material to it give it that wood grain look and to begin with I'm going to start by painting the legs what I've done is I've opened a leg component they're all all the legs are instances of the same component so just uh, by opening this I can apply the material to all the legs in one go and when I apply this material you can hopefully you can see that the wood grain goes in horizontally it's not the right direction for the direction the leg runs so we'll correct that and what I've done now is I've selected just one face and I'll right click and choose texture position and in this case I want to turn the material 90 degrees I could do that by dragging this green push pin but in this case it's easier to just right click again and choose rotate and then select 90 and I'm also going to take a minute to slide this around a little the wood grain material isn't quite as long as my legs are uh, so I'll just put the seam line or the end of the material um, up a little bit and I could edit this to and we may do that later we'll take a look and see how it turns out um, the when the you're in this uh, position editing for the material you can see some blue dotted lines that indicate the limits of the uh, image and then of course shows the repeating uh, texture. Now if I just get the select tool again and select the entire leg again well, that's a triple click with the selection tool and then I'll get the uh, sample eyedropper and sample the material on the face that I just adjusted the tool turns into the paint bucket and then I can click actually in the same place and you can see that the material has now been oriented vertically all the way around and I can reposition this material um, so that it doesn't copy quite the same or copy right around the corner the more figured the wood grain material the less realistic this uh, they look because there is some um, repeated texture uh, in the um, image and that doesn't generally occur in in wood. Now we um, I'll do the rails here I'm going to get the material out of the uh, material library. This time the wood grain goes in uh, correctly goes in horizontally. You can see though that I've got the same uh, grain texture running in both and it's mirrored because the components are mirrored but uh, we'll just pick a different part of the wood grain just for fun so we can edit that now I've got in this model I've got a horizontal and a vertical example of the material some folks will make in a separate image editor they'll make the vertical and horizontal materials but there's really no need to do that because you can very quickly um, adjust that position. Now in this case to paint the piece I've got selected at this point I just got the eyedropper tool and sampled the material off of the leg because the grain runs in the direction that I want and we'll do the same thing with the other piece and that's completed we've got these bottom rails so I've select off of one of the other horizontal rails 
and apply the material. And now we just have the top and the shelf to do. Now if we look at the, under the edit tab, the material that I've got uh, shows as four inches wide and I think I'll leave that at four inches. Um, but the material is going to repeat if I apply it to the tabletop. And that especially looks bad to me because we have the same, uh, in this case, reflex repeating across the table. So I'll fix that. Kind of looks like um, flitch matched plywood at this point. Actually, we'll undo the material. I'm just going to set in a guideline four inches in from the edge and we'll put another one in and one more. And while I'm, and I have this open for editing, so since this won't show from the bottom, I'm not going to worry about that. But I'll go ahead and do the ends. I don't have an end grain for this wood grain material, otherwise I would apply it to the ends of my boards. But from a bit of a distance, it doesn't matter anyway. So now I can go in and the you can see that the lines uh, delineated or limited where the material is going to be applied and actually I'll select the entire thing and paint it all just to get the material on the board and then or on the component and then I'm going to adjust the position of alternating materials. So I've turned this 180 degrees and then I'm going to try to pick something that isn't quite so obviously repeated there. And this one I won't rotate. I'll just move the position of the material down a little bit so that it's not really noticeable. And the same thing here. Actually, we'll flip this one left to right and move it a little bit. And so although it's the same pattern, actually now we have a sort of a book match, almost book match looking thing going on here. But we now have the material applied to to the top and the next uh, step would, for this would be to use the hide tool so the eraser with the shift key to hide all the edges there. If we, do, if we erase those edges then the material is going to, to change back to a repeating pattern. And we can quickly do that again here. So four, four, and four. And the material can go in. Oop. I neglected to draw the lines. Actually, even though I've applied the material here, if I draw the lines in, then I can split those up. So texture position, rotate 180 degrees and we'll move it a little. And we'll move this. Now one thing that some folks will do is apply their materials to the outside of the component. They won't open it for editing. The problem with doing that is you lose the ability to adjust 
the material's position. Uh, you don't get any control over where it is or its orientation in the model. And so I think we'll just leave that. We're going to have another book match sort of thing going on there. And we'll go ahead and stick it on. We won't worry so much about the end grain. Or the bottom, we're just going to give it a color and erase those. So again, I need to get in here and hide my edges there. And the material is applied. Um, we can, in the Edit tab, we can adjust things. So, for example, in this case, my material is about about 27 or 26 and a half inches long. I'm going to change the length of that, but I don't want to change the width. So, I'll click on the little chain link thing to unlock the ratio, the height to width ratio of the material, and I'm going to make it 30 inches long. Which will stretch that out just a little bit. We also have controls over the color. If we wanted to change the color, maybe we want green oak or not, um, we can modify that. We can also make the color darker or lighter if we want to give it a little bit more of a fumed oak look, we might do something like that. Um, you have a lot of control that way right there in the Edit tab. You can also export materials um, to use in a photo editor if you wish uh, so that you can modify them even further. Um, usually I don't find that that's all that necessary, but it is a possibility. Anyway, hopefully that gives you some ideas about how to apply materials in SketchUp. Uh, the, cha the biggest challenge is probably finding good wood grain materials in the first place. Um, they're few and far between, and typically the samples that you get are too small, so they repeat too frequently. And that's all right if you've got something that looks like you want it to look like it's been veneered with small pieces of veneer, but um, it's difficult with larger pieces. So give it a try. Uh, experiment with adjusting your material orientation and see how you get on.